Oh shit, it's not working. Hang on. <laughs> That's what she said. Hey. <laughs> uh, That's what I said. You did not see any of this. This is all just movie magic. Oh, yes. No sound? I don't There's no hear sound. It. No. No, we're not What's hearing happening? No sound. B by the way, chat, only 21% of you were correct about how late we'd be today. Still no sound. You guys don't talk. There's no sound. <laughs> there's no. no sound. Who said there was no sound? Me. There's All no sound. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. But is the chat saying no sound? Uh, I don't really care if you guys hear it or not. You can hear it on your own time. Chat's just saying boomer. <laughs> yeah. I'm guessing no sound. No sound. Oh. oh, there we go. I would inspire, motherfucker. Of all the five realms, Asgard is his hood. For miles you can see, he's just that good. North, south, east, and west, the Rainbow Bridge takes him to his quest. Name on Marky, like his uncle Loki. When he wants to be Oz and King. Kang, sorry, Kang, got so much wind. Check out all these rings. Hammer time, keep going. Look at me on their graffiti as well. Like, why? Oh because he's black. Formerly known as Prince for sure. His subjects, they just call him Thor. He's Thor. Ebonics. German. Germinger? Drop it like it's hot. <laughs> From Germinger to the Red Group. Ebonics. German. Germinger? He's Thor. This sounds like freaking Dr. Seuss. I'm only just a hot motherfucker. I'm only just a Thor. Spread it to your face. Now that was a banger. That motherfucker. Odin has Timberlands on. Fucking Timberlands. Oh my like, god. Hey, it is. Odin's fight. Odin's bald. How the fuck he got a face? Let it go, man. Let it go. <laughs> <laughs> and you shield this law son of Frasia from your might as your grace flows through. Thor. He's Thor. Ebonics. German Gorminger? Drop it like a <laughs> German Gorminger to the wreck crew. Ebonics. German Gorminger? He's Thor. This sounds like freaking Dr. Seuss. He's Thor. Ebonics. German Gorminger? Drop it like it's hot. From Germinger to the wreck crew. Ebonics. German Gorminger? He's Thor. From Germinger to the golden burgundy Oh, my God. Oh, fuck. No, no. I'm going to go buy this comic. <laughs> oh, 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 you Jesus. don't love Miles Morales' story, you ain't black. That's all I'm saying. Wow. The following program is rated TV MAL. It contains strong language and is intended only for mature audiences. Are clapping. Yeah. Hi, welcome Hello. to the very professionally produced real BBC. <laughs> How's everybody doing today? Good. You know, right. I'm on right. fire after that. Yeah, that was uh, freaking Perry. What was, what was the Hot Wings thing? Was that the name of the hero? Yeah, that was Valkyrie. 
Hot yeah. wings. <laughs> hot wings. Hot wings coming in hot. Because <laughs> black people love chicken. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Why would they do this? It's like bait or something. That made it past a lot of people. A lot of people. That made it past a lot of races. Because I hadn't seen yeah. that part before. Gosh. I don't know what miracles are in that comic. Yeah. Um, Hail Perry Chan, who, yes. uh, like, full creative freedom, by the way, just did, he didn't even tell me he was doing that. He just released it. I'm like, oh, what's this? Holy shit. That's awesome. So he's a genius. We love him. Uh, I don't want to fluff him up too much, though. He's all right. He's, he's okay. Don't, he's right. don't be a fluffer. Don't be a fluffer. No. Floofy. I was about to make a joke, but I just decided not to. Do it. Hey, dude, the <laughs> great thing about being a boomer is it's part of the part of like my whole channel identity now. So it's totally cool if I fuck up. <laughs> I kind of like it. It's great. It's freeing. <laughs> uh, you, and oh, the young ones get called boomers. Second, anything screws up. You know, I know. It's, it's horrible, but maybe in some ways it's freeing. It, it really is. Except when. Somebody call me a boomer for not liking Green Day. Green Day sucks. Green Day is pop punk. It's garbage. I felt dirty every time I had to sell one of their CDs at the <laughs> warehouse. Felt like I had to take a fucking shower. Yeah, I never like Green Day. Green Day is the Bon Jovi of punk rock, which is oh not at God. all. Listen to the Ramones, kids, if you want some uh, good music there. Listen to the Ramones. Uh, Iggy and the Stooges. You know, there you go. Go back. Go back to the source. Welcome um, to the music podcast. Yeah. <laughs> We might talk about Metallica later, too. Yeah. Metallica, yeah. Um, hi, Az from Heal hi. Babyface. How has your week been? How was your weekend? Uh, it was... I don't know, I've already forgotten. Not oh. exciting, huh? Yeah. We, we played like four to five hours of Vermin. Oh, I yeah. I remember. played some games. <laughs> wow. I guess, yeah. I guess I'm just that forgettable. Yeah, X-ray girl's really forgettable. That's what I learned this weekend. <laughs> uh, yeah, play some uh, on Saturday. No, Saturday uh, did some uh, Sons of Horus painting, which I really enjoyed. Did a little bit last night as well. Uh, Sunday uh, we played uh, Quarter Black myself, X-ray girl, Mark the cyborg. Uh, we played uh, four and a half hours of, of Vermintide Two, and like normally we're just like screaming and shouty, and we were screaming and shouty. Don't get me wrong ripping each other apart as we do and then by the end we were like a focused battalion of just like totally zoned in people because we were so desperate to finish this level because it was hard and and the chat were like throwing obstacles in a way but even the chat were realizing oh my god that they're, they're actually really trying to do this so we're, we're going to give them all the good stuff and we did oh. it and it was really good and uh, a lot of fun. This this the Vermintide Two stuff is uh, a lot of fun. A lot of fun. I really like the. I, sometimes I just find myself thinking about it. You, know? you believe this nerdy people playing video games? I oh. know nerdy people doing nerdy shit. Wow. What? Gross. I thought we were all just like fake fake geeks and stuff. We'll get to them later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm almost a full nerd. Is that what I'm hearing? I'm not just nerd adjacent anymore. You're in yeah, a cocoon. Yeah. You could be in a cocoon. It depends on the get your diploma topic. eventually. <laughs> will you come out a butterfly several... or will you come out a moth? So. Uh, I don't know. My mom will be very happy that I get more certificates, though. So she. Yeah. <laughs> it has to be signed off by several elder nerds. So yep. you're going to have to mm. find the elder council of elder nerds. Yes. <laughs> They're tough, those meetings. They just randomly throw you out questions like, you know, how many claws does Wolverine have in total? And you're like, is this a trick question? Or like, like on each if you get hand, it wrong, they kill what? you. Oh no. Oh my god. I'm scared. Mm. You will die. Well, I'm waiting for the answer, X Ray Girl. You gotta get it right. Oh my god, three on each hand. So add them up in total. Oh, six. Oh my god. Yeah, I thought you were good at math. What's up? Yeah. <laughs> it's apparently why I'm hired here. That's one of my credentials. That and I'm never sick. That's it. <laughs> Speaking of sick, yeah, Nina is out on assignment <laughs> under the covers being sick right now. So get better, Nina. Hope you're Bye, feeling Nina. better. She's uh got some of that uh 
Montezuma's Revenge. Well, I think you're immune to that if you live in Mexico, though. Hmm. Montezuma's well, Revenge. Does anybody even know what that is? I just no. like pulled one from way in the. It's when you go to Mexico and eat and drink the water, you get Montezuma's Revenge. How do you eat water? Um, in Mexico, <laughs> it's very easy. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's gross. You get like yeah, water. I <laughs> just kidding. Just yeah. kidding, Mexico. She got a fever. Was there or a flu? I got a fever. Um, well, yeah, she, she she next week, I flu. suppose. She'll miss out on all the complaining about the Kenobi finale. Yeah. God. Can, no, can we, we got to do that for every one of the shows we run. <laughs> so, <laughs> I it think was bad, everyone. It was really bad, and and we found out why. Um, <laughs> Todd Taylor, yeah. that is disgusting. <laughs> I saw what you said there. I'm not even going to repeat it. Um, yeah, we found out why because it's a it's repurposed like everybody thought it was. It was just the film that they added a couple of episodes to so much so that they had to give the original writer of the film credit. <laughs> although he had nothing to do with the series. And he said, yeah, it's a little bit my film. We'll go over that. We'll go over it. And the reason it's on yeah. Disney+. Plus. I'm guessing they just stole a couple of set pieces and then built a bunch of boring bullshit around it or something? Yep. I don't know. That's about it. Like the Fortress Inquisitorious. Everyone's favorite moment in the whole franchise. <laughs> mm. the evil butt plug. Well, the evil butt I think butt it plug. was uh, apparent by the fact that Leia got kidnapped, rescued, Kidnapped, rescued. rescued. <laughs> they were really clutching at uh, ideas for this uh, show, which is great. You gotta love it when fans are like, "This actually explains why Leia contacted him in A New Hope because he was hel he helped her last time she got kidnapped." It's, it's like which, which one? Which one? Are you seriously? <laughs> this is why a lot of us just kind of threw our hands up in the air after after Rise of Skywalker and Gina Carano got fired. We're just like. And we well, try. It is we pretty try. nuts where you're like, I am a fan of this slice of bread. Then there's like 10,000 loaves of shitty bread come out that call themselves linked to that one slice. And you'll just hang on to that one slice like, fuck me. I guess I'm not a fan of this whole thing anymore, am I? <laughs> like you guys, you know, you no. like all those loaves of bread. I guess when, that's when the new... As far as live action content is concerned, the vast majority of Star Wars sucks now. Uh, you yep. know, mm. it's it's... It, it no, I'm not a fan. Every passing fucking year, there's it gets smaller and smaller. The portion of Star Wars that we all like. Yep, tiny. It's a more. I think it's limited, way. limited to to six films in total, depending on who you are. Potentially three. But let's yeah. be honest. You know, Return of the Jedi isn't it's anywhere perfect. close it's as good to. Movie. Yeah, there's a funky. It's got movie. It's like some really good bits in it. Not it's so funny. good bits in it. The further back you draw it, the more it's like a percentage of people who are Star Wars fans, quote unquote, call themselves that and like the thing. It's like it starts out fucking like 50% maybe with Disney stuff because there's a lot of people out there who love it. You go back to the prequels and it's like, oh, we're looking at like a stronger 70% probably. Then you get to the OT and it's like, and now we're up to like 90%. Then you get to Empire and it's like, we're looking at 99% now. Like, I don't see how many people, very few people fucking say, oh, Empire was bad. That's the bad one. Apart from some, which website was it that tried oh. to go for some hate clicks and was like, Empire Strikes Back is the worst Star Trek fan. Shit take .com. Star Wars filming. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. So it could be Screen Rant. There's always screen one. Junkie, yeah. You know, screen junkie, anything, anything. Screen Rant. <laughs> screen Collider or whatever. Yeah. No, no. They, they, they love everything. They love everything, including Denny's. We'll get to that too. Who doesn't love Rogue Denny's? One? Mm -hmm. The last, the only thing I remember from Rogue One is that that the end, which was really I think good. that's why people are starting to be nice to it is because oh yeah, I don't remember that one being aggressively annoying, you know. So it's like guess I have a you know, or so knocking. I mean, like setting the precedent of knocking out stormtroopers with a bare fist. I mean, that was <laughs> that was lame. Yeah. yeah, I only like Rogue One. <laughs> I know this sounds bad. But from when they all started getting killed onwards, <laughs> that, that's like, when I. Oh, this, yeah. is so, this is a foreign film. It's cool. You know? <laughs> yeah. it's like but all this stuff before they got to the planet with the you know glass dome around it. Uh, until they got to there, it was boring as shit. Oh, shit! Hi, Eric. 
Sorry. I got to keep my phone on for my security. And I just turned on Eric July. Hi, Eric. Nice. Hi. <laughs> He's your um, security system. I just turned yeah. on Eric July. <laughs> <laughs> like, Back off. Crackhead. That's what he says. It just says crackhead over and over again when somebody hits the perimeter. Uh, nice. There ain't no crackheads in my neighborhood. Dude, I'm, someone in China I'm sure China. I live in a crack-free neighborhood because uh, I lived in Crack Central for long enough. What was that, Mahler? Oh, it was pretty well summed up in, in chat. Someone said Rogue One is tolerable. It's like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think that's fair. That's Not totally obnoxious. Fair. No, it, it definitely, like, you know... It, it it like made it look like well you know we we thought Disney would take time to work it out it would be a couple three movies not a decade and get much worse because they played in so much into the divisiveness and fandom and the toxic fandom and we fucking live in their fucking heads now and that they, they just make shit to piss us off and uh, I've got more <laughs> on that later too. I mean, that's that's what the the whole the access media, the, the what's left of it, the the dying shills are like their time is coming to an end, um, and they're not too happy about it. But that's why they constantly have to talk about the fans, uh, you guys, us, because we're we're getting through and we're finally the message is finally being heard by some not everybody disney will not listen to the message ever by the way they they're they're going to be woke into they'll be the last company to either go out of business or quietly change things without admitting anything cuz that's what disney does but they will be the last one to the change party i've said that over and over again if you'll see netflix fire i mean netflix is firing people and getting less woke before disney that tells you something i'm not saying it's going to work but uh we'll find out i we'll think disney out. gonna go down with that shit yep well i mean they've destroyed star wars they're in the process just of destroying marvel i mean the, the, how's that thor movie look and it turns out Man. they did film it in in, in volume in, in, the, just the big one in australia and um, it looks like it it looks like it. epitomize the mark the uh thor movie for me even before it's come out is the uh the makeup line that they've released <laughs> i saw that and i was just Whoa. like perfect this just sums up this sums up disney in a nutshell uh it's it's not for dudes none of this is for dudes anymore it's all for uh for fucking chicks yeah there's a thor, thor love and thunder makeup line makeup yeah. line thor and love yeah thor love and thunder makeup line what you can have um king valkyrie's oh. makeup line which is, I, uh, I think it's just line. one color because it's just one fucking note uh, from, nice. from, uh, from her. Mm. Well, yeah, um, I think when we were first talking about how it was getting close to release, like we're talking about like fucking a year, I was like, okay, maybe, maybe. But after everything I've seen, I'm like, oh, shit. So there it is, Thor in volume. So that's that's why it looks so shitty. Well, yeah, because I think they think their um, stagecraft sets like just automatically mean everything looks great. No, um, but like, yeah, I mean, it uh, takes a little bit more work than simply having it. No, it looks like he's standing in front of a screen, like that. The whole trailer does, and you know, I've been hearing everybody go, "Well, they'll finish it and post, and they might touch some stuff up, but we'll see." I don't think we should ever expect that for these films because these no. are the ones that are sped out so fucking fast. They're like um, somehow the highest budget B movies ever. Yeah, just getting like shoved out. They don't give a fuck anymore. Because um, yeah. seriously, I think I, I I'll never be more surprised than with Kenobi. I can't believe how much it's in. Um, Drink has mentioned it. I think you guys have. I know that we have on EFAP, but like that was your golden goose. What the fuck are you doing? It's Vader and Kenobi. Do you even know who these people are and why people care about them? Do you have any idea? Why aren't you packing all of your money into this? I could have been it could have been such a good film. It could have been such a good series. Uh it had all the potential in the world to be so, but they chose the vehicle of we're gonna elevate Leia above Luke. Make sure that you are aware of that. That's our priority. Luke's piece of shit. Reaver's better than Vader. Uh, Tal Tala, <laughs> uh, she's better than uh, everyone. 
it, it was it, if you if you I was speaking to Mola just before the show, and I said to Mola, I said, uh, you know, we've taken the piss out of Kenobi a lot. We've had a lot of laughs, joking around, mucking around. But if you were just serious and 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 broke it down seriously, it's a really really cynical show. Just this yeah. deconstruction of Vader, deconstruction of Luke, deconstruction of Kenobi. It's just dr another another Disney Marvel vehicle that just drips of misandry. It just it's just full of male hatred. There's this, this underlying constant theme of hatred towards men in these shows, and it's because it's it's. Uh, that all the heads running them are just intersectional feminists. And so their prejudice just filters down into, into all of these TV shows. And, um, you know, you got to the point where after the show, you know, Kathleen Kennedy said a few days ago, hey, if you want more of this, <laughs> we'll make some more. And it's just like, you you got to ask your audience if they want more. You're Dude, the it, one it, with it. all the demographics there. You're the one with all the... Um, statistics of who's watching this and whatnot doesn't it come across a little bit like she as well as all of disney are aware that this should have been a slap to the face for anybody who likes this character and then everyone's like more and they're like you want more really <laughs> like kick me in the balls uh, more kathleen like, what's okay. more. Get rid of these people you know <laughs> that, that's... I've, dude i've seen people who are like don't make a season two season one was perfect it's like what? <laughs> perfectly bad yeah it's just there's a point where you just got to throw your hands up in the air and just, you know what? Let them Look, we it. didn't like Star Wars for the same reasons. And that's that's fine. That's absolutely fine. I mean, when are they going to figure it out? The Disney. Okay, so let's measure positive and negative. And, and I'll be nice about this. I'll try to be as fair as possible. People really accepted and loved The Mandalorian. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we'll just say that. We'll say uh, whatever that final Clone Wars season was, which was largely written before even uh, Disney took over, yes. I believe. Yes. All right. Um, there's the end of Rogue One. And we'll, we'll even say Rogue One. But then we have the High Republic. We have Boba Fett. We have the entire Disney trilogy. Um, then whatever goodwill you had for Boba, uh, for Mandalorian, the whole journey of season two was undone in two episodes inside of Boba Fett. So it really fucked up your Mandalorian experience. Uh hiring woke writers to do your fucking games uh getting rid you know getting rid of the eu and then you just fucked up obi-wan and darth vader and in your disney trilogy let's not mention that you i mean we don't want to forget to mention that you fucked up han solo and luke skywalker and princess leia so i don't know what there is to hang on to the occasional snow speeder that shows up on screen i mean i don't know what you're hanging on for i really don't Somebody, Cassian Andor. Only one saying hello there. Cassian Andor. <laughs> Cassian Everyone's Andor. favorite as. What are you doing? Cassian he said the line. Everyone said the line. He said the line. He said the line. He said hello there to Luke. Hello there. Oh, I've, I've seen the clips of like, oh, his nephew for a bad dream. The React channels that legit cry when they see him say that. It's like, I don't understand. Uh, that's emotionally unstable people come on it's just he just, just said hello, hello, hello there, there. <laughs> just, come on. it was just a complete throw a late way line in <clears throat> Star Wars because somebody they... introduced himself to somebody hello there when I see that like the crying reaction to that I, my brain immediately goes to Obi-Wan season 2 season 3 season 4 season, it's all just gonna fucking pile up if there is a trailer for season 2 and Qui-Gon is saying something to Obi-Wan that's encouraging people go nuts they'll just go absolutely fucking nuts this will be a good season guys I'm pretty sure this one will be the good one Obi-Wan's season finale is <laughs> him going to you know like his for you know him going to get Luke uh, out in the dune sea he's just walking off it's gonna be terrible uh, yeah, I, I I wouldn't be surprised we get a season two. Um, I just don't know how much energy there was for that. There was with the Star Wars fandom, but it certainly seemed like the normies checked in on the first episode and just gradually checked out as time went on. And, the, you know, they brought this up in an article. Probably, I forgot what, uh, what shit outlet. I think it was Hollywood Reporter. But they said, you know, yeah, I think it was the Hollywood Reporter. They said it might be better for Star Wars just to make things for their hardcore fan base, be specialized. Uh, uh, in other words, you ain't getting normies anymore. 
which is not why they got in the Star Wars business. So you can yeah. kiss movies goodbye at that point. But who's their hardcore? Seriously, I'm not taking a piss here, Gary. Who's their hardcore fan base? Because their hard, hardcore fan base hate this. Yeah, they diluted the fuck out of the hardcore fan base. It's all gone. So, yeah, got, so we talking, are we consumer. talking the people that like The Last Jedi? Yeah. Is that now the hardcore fan base? That that's, Those that's, people have moved he's... on. They don't care anymore. They're, no. they're gone. They're on to talking about whatever the new thing is. Yeah, well, it's, that's it's, that's mainstream media. Well, not mainstream media. They legit, that is uh, production fault because production has now is now teaching people to to that everything's disposable. This content is disposable. Literally, just get excited for next thing. Before any Marvel film, right? How many times have we heard in the last couple of years when a Marvel films come out that the shill media? They say when they've seen the episode, when they've seen the movie, and they've come out and they've seen the movie, they've said, "You should, uh, you cannot wait to see what the end credit scene is." Because oh, it's literally get ready for next. Wasn't there, next wasn't there a tweet recently that's like a Thanos level threat is about to be revealed in the MCU in the Ugh. next few months? Did they, did they not realize Wanda was already more than that? Yeah, she was uh, way more than that. A threat way more to than the that. entire multiverse. I don't know if they know that happened in their film. Did you not watch Loki? <laughs> where those stones don't matter anymore and they're fucking mm. paperweights and paperweights. shit? Thanos level threat. My uh, ass. Thanos level threat. Thanos is a pussy. If they're going yeah. to Thanos level threat, it's like going down to, to ground roots level again. Yeah. Th- like, they, oh, no. Well, they're we, leading we up to with him. Secret- they're leading it, up. To sorry, it just, <laughs> I was just gonna say like the, we we've learned they can deal with them in like five thousand different ways. So I don't even know why we would care about a Thanos coming anyway. Yeah. So um, we had a multiversal threat in Doctor Strange, and this whole the, the next two phases are going to lead to a multiversal threat, and they're going to bring in everybody. So um, like Ben Affleck as Daredevil will probably come back in a cameo in Secret I Wars. Hope so. It'll just be like, and then you'll have to absolutely reset the Marvel universe from scratch at that point. Cause it, it'll be done. Like there's no, like, what else are you going to do? You've already reached the highest stakes and you're doing them again. And it just, the quality isn't getting better. And like Thor, we should be excited about Chris Hemsworth and Chris, Christian Bale being in a film together. We should absolutely yeah. be excited, but we're not, we're not. Cause it's going to be about Jane Foster. By the way, Thank spoilers you know. came out. Did you read the spoilers? No, I don't care about this fucking okay, show. Okay, well, you don't bit. need to because you'll be able to guess what the fucking oh. movie's about. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So whatever you guessed, you're right. You're right. Just like we guessed with Reva, you guessed completely right with uh, with with Jane Foster. So big, huge weekend. Uh, mo- hundreds of millions of dollars. Uh, 68% drop second weekend. 67, 68% drop. That's my prediction. Real quick. Nobody cares except for, for me because I wasted an hour watching it. Westworld came back. Westworld did it? came back. It did. Um, do you want to hear what the ratings were? <laughs> for oh, Westworld? yes, please. Westworld do season it. four? Okay. So just to, to, to get you caught up on everything. Westworld season one, very popular series. Two and a half, three million people watched it. It was it the was pretty good. Game. It was pretty fucking good. Season two dipped a little bit. Went down to about a million and a half people watching it. Season three came out. It lost 64% of its ratings in season three. Ooh. Season four comes out 79.31% down from the previous season. 325,000 people watched it live. Dude, that show's done. <laughs> Shit. Damn. It's Have over. Have they said anything about this one being like the last season? Or? No, they wanted to do one more after this. <laughs> oh, good luck! Get uh, down below, Batwoman, dude. That is. Dude, have you got? Is... Have you got the the numbers on Stranger Things as a comparison or no? Uh, have the demo, by the way. The oh, the demo is point oh six. <laughs> Ow! <laughs> so that means eighty thousand of those were in the key demo. Uh, about that. About that. Yeah, Eighty ninety thousand. Um, which is a percentage of uh, it's point six percent of the entire demographic in the United States. That's how they measure that number, which is like 180 million. Um, so no, I, I I need to go, the the Roku, the, all we can get is Roku numbers for, uh, for Strange, which is like, I would say a third. 
maybe a third if we're uh, being generous. Woke it, world failed then. That is crazy. By yeah, the looks world. of things, Netflix are very happy to welcome Stranger Things back to being its like iconic show for the for the platform. Because if you remember, that was like the, right now. It dwarfed one of the. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, it's just that like when Netflix was still finding its feet as a place to like generate TV as opposed to just hosting it, um, Stranger Things was one of the ones that people were like, "Oh, Netflix isn't lame. It actually has its own thing." Um, but that sort of disappeared. Like nobody cared about it after the, the two seasons. Uh, well, two and three, I mean. But uh, it seems like it might be coming back for that rep again. If they can nail the finale, uh, they can milk Stranger Things for another three years, probably. Oh, easily. They're talking spinoff already, too. I mean, they could time jump later with the kids. All they have to do is fucking make it good. <laughs> like, that's all they have to do. Making it good. And they, yes, they do have to stick the landing. They absolutely have to stick the landing. Yeah, the ending them. can change everything. Westworld did not do. It's really bad. It's really bad. So um, it, it's introducing new characters with the most uninteresting part of the cast. Like it was a bait and switch. It was a total bait and switch. So Anthony Hopkins, Ed Harris. I forgot that other guy who played young William. He was good. There's a bunch of great actors in it that aren't in it anymore. And now we're left with Tandy Newton and Tessa Thompson. Hey. <laughs> Yay. Wait, is Anthony Hopkins in season four? I'm guessing not. Uh, he, Keeps turning up as like a ghost or whatever, right? I think, well, he know because in season two, he basically said, Bernard, you're the best one. You always were. <laughs> and then faded off in the exit. Like, I was fuck off show. The show was clearly like, we need to unwipe this shit. There's, there's like too many white people. And, you know, they have a couple of remaining men left that they have to fucking kill. But every man is now being led around, literally led around by a woman. OK, so Caleb Aaron Paul's led around by Dolores at first and then Tandy Newton and then Ed Harris is now dead. William's dead. They fucking killed William and they replaced him with a robot who can control people's behavior for some reason, because mm. it's all simulation, by the way. Wait, is, is Dolores guessing. still like fully in it? She's a different person now. Oh, so Dolores no. is a Chris is an author named Christine who writes NPCs and she's in a video game. So she's inside of a video game writing NPCs and she's controlling all the NPCs and they're like, you got to write me out of the story. I only watched season one, so I'm so fucking lost listening to you talk about oh, this. Like, it's, what? It's dumb. There's a big fucking antenna that's controlling everybody because they're all in a fucking simulation. That's why. Oh, the, just like great. we said from the beginning. Remember when they go lost? They're like, everybody's dead. Yeah, it's the same shit. That's a bad robot production. You know, no surprise. Nobody wants to hear about fucking Westworld. Nobody watched it. Um... I got some good news about Spider-Man. What's that? Oh, yeah. Uh, Spider-Man are introducing a gay Spider-Man. Ooh. Mm. Uh, in Sp and Giles Morales? <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I don't want to say that Marvel are, are kind of really getting themselves into a little bit of trouble. Uh, -oh. uh but let's just let's just have a look at this image shall we oh no uh, this cover for the new gay spider-man um oh. oh my god i'm like that guy as a spider-man oh my god is he really just going i am spider-man i am a big guy spider-man oh my god so that is uh Web I don't know. Weaver Dickie is... McHuffington? I don't know. You know? Um, that is the campest fucking shit well, I've ever fucking seen. His femme identity is central to who he is. Okay, for one, you're... A, okay, dude. Gay men aren't femme, okay? Like, they're not... This, like That is holy shit. This is <laughs> the guy that did us. it, look. Something I realized immediately when conceiving Web Weaver is Web that he Weaver. can't and shouldn't <laughs> represent all gay men. Just the massive fucking out and proud flipping... His fearless femme identity is... This is the most stereotypical gay dude you've ever seen. Uh, is central to who he is. His femme identity is... Okay. Yeah, they got to meet more gay people. Story <laughs> which you can experience for yourself. Uh, no, I'm good, dude. Thanks. Uh, okay. I'm fine. 
It's funny, we got, um, uh, oh. on the, like, oh, wait, what's, oh. oh. <laughs> Darling. Wow, I'm, web, I'm web weaver. Web weaver. Eyelashes at the bottom of his eyes. Yep. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> oh, oh, he's my. got ruffles and, uh, yeah, nice. It looks like it's... a fashion designer drew this. A bad well, that's one. all it is, isn't it? Because all did, they do yeah. now is the bloody ball, the X Men ball. Because they just like, oh my god, did you see Ezra oh. Miller at the gala? Those sleeves, um, they no. seem effective for crime fighting, super yeah. effective. Yeah, god, that sucks, doesn't it? That costumes now are never about practicality, they'll just be about how good does it look strictly. Even, even the it fluffy stuff at the top, it doesn't even too. look good. Yeah. Oh my that's god. what I'm saying. They think it looks fantastic. Like what's that? Like, this yeah, what is this color going on? It looks like 1800s or <laughs> who knows yeah. Renaissance color going on there. I have no idea. <laughs> ruffles. Who was, was ruffles? It's fucking ruffles. You know how hard it is to get blood out of ruffles. <laughs> <laughs> really, hard. <laughs> really fucking hard. This looks like a person who doesn't fight crime. Time. This looks like a person who just like turns up to a to a bank robber and goes, "Oh my god, don't I just look?" Fabulous here. Okay. Press. Take some photos. It's like this is should be something in the boys. Oh, I could see it working in the boys, yeah. You know, like could just could, because it's a satirical piece. Yeah. Somebody said Liberace Parker. <laughs> <laughs> if it was in the boys, he'd have like a gay laser or something that could gaydar. It, it would be like a like a rainbow That's his laser. Power. That, He'd be called it's Spider cool. Gay. <laughs> <laughs> My gay senses gay. are tingling. Gay. <laughs> look at those eye look at eye shape. Oh my god. Imagine like that you just don't care to make them incredible like intelligent uh versions. So instead of like your know, silver surf or like turn that game, just go, I don't know, the, the silver gay. <laughs> like that's yeah, as far yeah. as you'll go creatively. <laughs> Gay man, um, you know, I don't fucking know. Mm. What would you do with the Hulk? The gay? Gaydar, uh, gaydar tingling. Yeah, the gay. <laughs> the gaydar tingling. <laughs> yeah, my, my, my gaydar is tingling. <laughs> oh, you said that in the chat. I lost it. Sorry. Time to go to the club. Get full credit. <laughs> oh, oh, my God. Oh, it's so... You just gotta laugh at this point. <laughs> It's the that. most wonderful. I I um envisage that that comic's going to sell millions. Oh yes, of pennies. Not yeah, even I'll pennies. buy a million uh, myself. Millions of um doll hairs of Twitter likes. <laughs> yeah, it, oh. yeah, yeah, thousands. No, I'll be bots. It, it'll sell just as well as what if Miles Morales was Spider Man. <laughs> Hey, finally, finally. So I what like else that. was there about Westworld? <laughs> <If it ended. laughs> oh. um, so Ed Harris, the only good scene was Ed Harris, like uh, buying the Hoover Dam, which is now a server farm. The Hoover okay. Dam is a server server farm. And um, Tessa Thompson He's basically Tessa Thompson's avatar. The best part is Tessa Thompson in this. Remember, she was uh, that she worked for Delos. She's yeah. dead now, and she's got Dolores's brain. So she's like evil Dolores. So Dolores split herself what? up into a in the like three because so, so when they went into the real world, Dolores brought a bunch of copies of herself because she was so <laughs> awesome, and there was like good Dolores and bad Dolores. So uh, basically, Dolores is wearing blackface. <laughs> In, uh, in Westworld because it's the mind of a white woman in her, an angry white woman, by the way. And yeah, it's terrible. It's the, fucking terrible show. Well, how's the um, how's it looking in terms of like, does it look like it's still expensive? Oh, no, 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 they, they've uh, they've reduced the episode count and they're all like shooting in LA and Manhattan, uh, just finding modern architecture because it's not in the park anymore. They have not been back to the park. They're going back to the park later in the season, uh, and they're they're finally bringing back like old hosts. But it's like way too late. 
Jeffrey Wright wasn't even in this episode, and neither was Tessa Thompson, which probably made it a little better. But um, uh, and Teddy came back. To, you have Teddy to cuddle off back. and treat Westfield as a mini series. One, 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 one series, and you're good. You're good. Just leave the rest to your imagination. Don't watch the rest because it's bad. It's really fucking bad. Uh, Jonathan Nolan doesn't have anything to do with it anymore. He doesn't even write it. He's just an executive producer. He fucked off. So oh, it's wow. just his wife, Lisa Joy, who sucks. She sucks. She's terrible. Um, but uh, not as terrible as uh, the Web Weaver. <laughs> I want to see the Web Weaver in Westworld. What's, what's his saying? Uh, gay Venom. They've probably already done Gay Venom, right? Or they, yeah, it's um, called it's called AIDS. Oh yeah, he got cancer, right? Or was it AIDS? He got cancer. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Jesus. Um, hi, Mahler. How you doing? Hello. Oh, it's my, the past like few weeks just been Kenobi nonstop because I. Uh, I've been doing all kinds of work IRL, but then every time I sit back at the computer, it's like, you got to do Kenobi. I'm like, eh, eh, why? But it's already over. And in some ways, I was like, man, that was quick, wasn't it? Felt more like a three-episode show or something. Yeah, I think it was only over the course of like a month, right? If that. It was a really no, weird release schedule. Weeks. Yeah, yeah. Which again, first... the budget, the amount of episodes, the speed at which they released them i don't understand any of these choices when you go vader and kenobi literally the two actors remaining to play them that everybody is like oh you got them that's a draw you don't have many of those left disney you need to be careful but uh nope they just threw it out a ton of people get really powerful jobs in hollywood due to their associations but when they're ripped away from that person they're associated with and they go on their own turns out Nine out of ten times, they suck. Uh, Kathleen Kennedy is a great example of that. Just an absolute a, failure at running a studio. Good, I guess, fine producer. You can, you know, she as long as she's with Spielberg. You know, she produced Who Framed Roger Rabbit? You know, Indiana Jones films. But I think she yeah. was just getting coffee and got a lot of credit for what her husband did. Well, hey, coffee's important for it is. Away. I'm not gonna <laughs> say it's not. I'm not gonna say it's not. Um, I uh, I'm kind of like it makes me feel like they just they have to be dramatically out of touch because I was thinking about how um, the excitement that can get drawn from something like a, a Kenobi, even though um, RLM of course said that Kenobi is a boring character anyway. So, which is uh, like it it baffles me because I I know with like any kind of finger on the pulse of the fan base, you'd be like they're gonna they're gonna go nuts to see Vader and Obi Wan. Yeah, of course. Same for Luke. That should be obvious, um, but they're not being careful with that either. Just tossing him into a random episodes of other people's seasons. How you doing there, guys? What's going on? <laughs> I just I saw a meme. Um, web uh, web spider oh. gaze. Oh no! Uh, Gwen oh. Stacy's just got revealed. Got uh, announced. Yeah, I like my this meme. It's a, finally a picture of Az below his upper body, and it's my Snorlax. <laughs> this is Spider Gaze Gwen Stacy. Oh just my God! Swing it into. Spider Gaze, I'm coming. <laughs> I'm coming to save you. <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> it needs it no. needs music. It's a tragedy in in one act. I could use sound effects as well. <laughs> but yeah, uh, it would be great if she took the child out at the same time as well. That would have been bonus points. Because <laughs> like Luke's going. going to show up in a Soga show probably again, isn't he? Oh, yeah. oh god, yeah. And they'll just keep making him show up with the stupid robot voice. <laughs> I'm gonna pass my what test. I'll you? study hard. <laughs> what say you? <laughs> oh, I watched um, Raiders of the Lost Ark finally. And what'd good. you think? I liked it. I liked it. You liked it? You just liked it? I loved it. Okay, I won't lie. The first time I watched, it, I watched it like in segments, and that did it a total disservice. Is it much more like? Oh no. Well, <laughs> I, to be fair, I was like falling asleep too because it's like oh. Cool. Um, yeah, so then I watched it a second time awake, sitting up, and yeah, much better. So I, I think 
uh, every time I watch it. it and it's the kind of like the nostalgic aspect. And I really, really like how the camera work, especially um, it's so well done. I hate shaky cam so much. And the action scenes are just so good. It's so realistic. That's, that was all Kathleen Kennedy. We'll allow uh, yeah. it. Was it? She she passed. No. <gasps> <laughs> oh. So that that's where I saw someone that said that's where the the, the the web comes out of. It makes sense why you would have that. I mean, yeah, but he's got to got to get access to the the web shooter. So yeah. <laughs> Uh, that is that is too perfect. Too perfect. Oh, oh. Extra, are you planning on watching all three of the Indiana Jones yes. movies? Yes. Yes. Nice. So I'm watching the next one this weekend and the one after that. So you may be watching the uncut version of Temple of Doom. There's an uncut version. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. I'll try and find it. Now you have failed the council. We don't. We don't. <laughs> we don't. We don't. We don't want to have the cut version. I guess. No. No. Okay. A as likes it uncut more. <laughs> <laughs> this is getting. This is getting weird now. <laughs> Sorry, weird. I had to. <laughs> I mean, Anywho. Weird. Yeah. We're, we're there. We're well into the weird. <laughs> I make it weird. It's all good. Ah. <laughs> uh. But yeah, wow. I'm I'm excited to watch the rest of them. That's good. You'll like them. There's only yeah. three. There's only three. Don't need to watch. It's so weird. Yeah. They were like, "Oh, we're making a fifth one." I was like, "You can't just skip over four. You got to make that." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How are you doing that? Just uh, Hollywood can't even count. Nope. But X-ray girl can because she's Asian. Wow. Hey <laughs> <laughs> um uh, hello X ray girl. How are you? I I'm great. I'm a little discombobulated. Good. I came off of a night shift and when I woke up, I'm like, oh no, I'm late. <laughs> Cause I woke up with the, the alarm. Yeah. Um, but I was on time. I was on time. And uh excited for good sleep tonight. <laughs> I really am. I'm yeah. so sleepy. Yeah. I don't know how you guys do mm -hmm. it. Like last night, Jeremy was playing Fortnite for six hours after his stream. Coffee. Some coffee. Uh, Jeremy doesn't sleep. Drugs. Uh, Jeremy. Jeremy yeah. <laughs> wait, sorry. There you go. Um, wait, wait. <laughs> there we go. That's what we want. Uh, Jeremy, do you know what time he wakes up in the afternoon? Like he's wake. He'll wake up in a couple of hours. He's like I a teenager. Called him, called him one time at two, and he's like, I'm just getting up, man. I'm like, what the fuck? And I'll stay up just as late as him, but I can't, like, stay up. I can't sleep past, like, See, At least I have the excuse 30. that all of the things on the internet happen in American time. Am I right, As? Mm -hmm. Everybody's like, oh, you're going to Just like, excuse me. Britain made you, okay? You came from us. We deserve more respect. We birthed you. Okay, mama, 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 male, mama as. male fee product, female product. You know what? Why don't you work out your BBC first before you tell us what to do at all? I just work your own shit out. Just worry about your. We might need your help on that one, like a war yeah. or something. <laughs> Send over some tanks. I don't know. Well, well, you can. Oh no, they're doing fundraisers. It's all fundraisers now. Don't send mm -hmm. so. Just do send over some drones. You know. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Some friendly Get drones uh, that provide scripts. That are good. That, yes, that drop script bombs. What's that? What's that? Uh, what's that obnoxious bitch called? Um, who? Uh, oh, we were just talking about her. Who thinks she's saving the world? And she's Trudeau? just oh, the thirteenth no, doctor, right? No, the 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 little fucking how dare you, been Oh, Gre 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 Greta Thunberg. Greta Thunberg. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and she was went... she was at Glastonbury talking <laughs> yeah, about the environment, picture. and then. When they all left, the whole field's just littered full of trash. shit and plastics <laughs> and all this <laughs> stuff. She's such a fucking fake ass bitch. To make that really. perfect, you need one guy picking stuff up with a black uh, bin bag. <laughs> black bin like, yeah. 
<laughs> the clipper. <laughs> I'll be here for a while. Oh my! Be like when it's got at the North Pole or whatever. I might. I'm going away now. I might be some time. History. I gotta oh. find that article. Uh, about the here. Give me a minute. Give me a sec. How dare you? I'm gonna find the where the uh, Kenobi writer is talking about. Uh, Ken Booby. Ken Booby. <gasps> Ken Booby. Oh. Well, hello there. Hello oh, there. Man, that was the best part of the show. Even though oh. Luke had never met Obi Wan before until the new hope. Hi, Jeremy. He just woke up. Yeah. There he is. Hi. Yeah. He does, like, hello. it's a little early for him, actually. <laughs> He went to Some... bed, I think, around five. If he went to bed when he stopped his stream, crazy uh, kid, crazy. Uh, On um, Kenobi. Kenobi, by the way, I do think more and more every time they come back to that stupid ass finale. I'm like, isn't it one of the things everyone's wanted to know is what Qui Gon thinks about Anakin as a result after the, the prequels? It's like, man, you were like super invested in this kid. Look what happened. What What do you have to say about it? Do you think they didn't have him say anything because they actually had no idea how to handle that? Say that again? You know how, like, for, certainly people in the audience will understand this. Like, the prequel okay. fans, one of the biggest things they're going to want to see is what uh, Obi uh, Qui-Gon would have to say about Anakin after everything. Like, Yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, so, I was looking up this. this. Yeah, and what I'm asking is, like, the fact that they opted to have him say nothing... Do you yeah. think it's because they didn't know what to say? They didn't know what to make canon there? Yeah. So, I, I was going to say, won't they, like, script a couple lines and then kind of choose from there? Like, I feel like that's what a lot of studios do, right? Possibilities. The way I heard it is they weren't even sure he was going to be in it. Oh. And then That makes sense to me. He showed up. Sense. Yeah. like yeah, it, I, yeah. His scene could have been cut and the, the final episode wouldn't have made any difference at all. No, so it does seem like they just tacked it on so that people could say, "Look at look at that the image." It's like, "Look, it's Qui Gon, it's the Emperor, it's Leia, it's jangle, Vader, jangle, it's Obi Wan." You have to jangle, see this show. What Django? Did you say Django? Django, 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 Django. Oh, jangling. Key, I thought you were talking. Oh, oh jangling, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, Those keys go jingle, jangle, oh. jingle, jingle, jingle. Star Wars fans go, "Ee, oh, the pretty lights." <laughs> I cannot wait to clip that. <laughs> Master qui -Gon, I can see you. I've been here the whole time watching you touch yourself in the cave. Oh, my God. Ooh. Master qui -Gon. It's so Ooh. weird. It's like Frankenstein. Was it Young Frankenstein? When you called my name out, then I got worried. When he's listening to music, uh, Young Frankenstein, he starts grabbing yeah. the notes that you can't see out of the air. That's a Star Wars. That's a Disney Star Wars fan. Ooh. 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 <laughs> <laughs> with them, with how like good stories work, right? You get your your setups, and then you get what you call payoffs. It's this crazy idea. I know you guys probably never heard of it, thanks to the what? video we've been watching recently. Um, this show almost had some, right? Where it's like Obi Wan's sad, keeps asking to see Qui Gon, feels guilty about Anakin, Master Qui Gon, are you there? Oof, can't reach him. So we're all thinking like, so you'll come in at the eleventh hour and tell him all the stuff about Anakin. And then he never does, even though there's several opportunities for him to. Never does. And so the whole, like, they weren't sure they were going to get him, they probably did have complications, and they only sorted it out right at the end, where it was too late to inject him properly, and so they just threw that shit on the end. So when Kenobi's on the ship in the final episode, and he's about to yeah. get into the pod and go, and he's on his own, and he's talking to Master Qui-Gon, and that's probably it. That's, probably... that's the place that Qui Gon should have appeared. It probably was where he showed up in the original script. Um, yeah, they, they actually talk about it a little bit in this article. Oh, let's do it. Yeah, my favorite bit is when Leia stormed off, and the guy stopped Kenobi from following her, saying she needs her space. Fucking ten-year-old. Oof! You should have seen Rags. He wanted to kill the guy who did that. I, I would have <laughs> fucking. I would have backhanded him. She's 10. Yeah, you know when a 10-year-old needs their space? When I tell them to go to their fucking room. Yes, that's when yes, they need their space. Yes. <laughs> you can have all the space you want in your in room. Your, in your room. 
<clears throat> and I'm taking the PlayStation out as well. So fuck off. Well, you know, we know how they feel about ten year olds, though. <clears throat> it's the new sixteen. The new sixteen. Disney. Yeah. Oh my god, that my tweet triggered so many fucking people, dude. It was <laughs> so funny. I guess you're not doing Twitter properly if you don't trigger anybody. Oh, dude, it's still going on. <laughs> it's so funny. They are so mad. Um, you're only 10 years old, but you won't always be. Oh, creepy. Creepy. Uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi has wrapped on Disney Plus or D Plus, which is what I like to call it, bringing back Ewan McGregor as the titular character, telling the story. Of how he was forced off tattoo. Forced <laughs> off? He chose. Pretty sure that was a decision. Yeah, yeah. He it was a bad decision, but he chose. It's not about the boy. Fuck the boy. Fuck Luke. This is about Leia. This is about elevating Leia. Okay. I guess so. Forced off Tatooine between Revenge of the Sith and Star Wars. And pitting Boosh. him against his former Padawan, learner Darth Vader. The oh. series as a whole proved to be extremely popular amongst fans, breaking viewership records on the streaming platform. Let's see what that links to the first episode. I was about to say, is it just Disney saying that that's the reality of it? Or Yeah, Disney told us it broke records, so it did, because Disney it... said so. I just find it interesting because by that logic, then whenever they don't announce yeah. it, it didn't, right? It's Therefore, from the first all... episode. Okay, so let's play this game. Okay. How many subscribers does Disney Plus have? Oh, uh, well over a hundred million. Okay, and and what million of people tuned in to watch Kenobi? I think it was over a five day period. Correct me if I'm wrong. Chat mm -hmm. two and a half million people. Yeah. So uh, less than two and a half percent. Damn. Of your audience tuned in to watch Kenobi, and that's a record for the site. Sorry, what? Don't that's look what like your Disney site's doing particularly fucking well, does it? That's is it? below the percentage. Marvel, of... No, it beat Marvel. Yeah, it, it was the highest. Per, it was the biggest premiere on Disney Plus ever. That's what they. But Loki did two point eight, didn't it? Didn't Loki according did According to Disney, well, uh, <laughs> let's keep this in mind. According Loki to beat it. What the fuck are people signed up for if it's not Star Wars and not Marvel? Like, what, what is Disney doing that you're so obsessed with? I think with Loki might have beat it in the long run, but that's, again, according to Disney. So it's all bullshit. Of course, they that's can't it. lie, but they can definitely skew. Shout out to never fucking understanding why Loki is so popular with people. But there we are. Tom Hiddleston. Women love Tom Hiddleston. I mean, he's awesome. Shame about... Look, we've got one nodding like a fucking dog in the back of a car right now. <clears throat> Hmm. Loki season two is already filming, right? Yep, mm -hmm. it is. It's gonna be sorry, Sylvie, C number. Sylvia, Sylvie, whatever. Sylvie season, season two, two is filming in front of a screen at Disney as we yes. speak. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> How many times do you think he's been kicked in the balls already? Uh, twice already. S Sixteen. Oh, and man. that's before they've even started filming. <laughs> so breaking that's just Kathleen Kennedy breaking viewership records on their own streaming service, according to themselves. However, despite its success, a portion of the Star Wars fan base has expressed that the show would have been better story as a standalone film. I think uh, uh, a portion of us were saying it should have never been told. Um, no. And originally, that was exactly what Lucasfilm's plan was. What's that, as? No. Luke should have, uh, Obi-Wan should have never met Leia. He should have never left Tatooine. Now, you could have constructed a, a, an interesting Western-style maybe a western style movie about a bunch of inquisitors that came to um to Tatooine to try and hunt hunt a jedi and that could have brought uh Obi-Wan Kenobi into the fray and then the twist was it wasn't even Obi-Wan or Luke that they're after it was just another jedi and that jedi's killed in the final confrontation with the inquisitors the incurious inquisitors we don't need to check archives there's <laughs> Kenobi's not here let's just go <laughs> We don't need yeah. to pursue this Jedi anymore. Ooh, this place is a bit hot. Let's get back in. Oh, look, there's a lightsaber. Let me walk into it. Because <laughs> I'll just... Oh. I got two stomachs. I can just get up again later. I was going to say, plain, that, uh, gonna say playing Jedi Fallen Order at the moment, the, 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 second, the second sister in that is, is just so much better than Reva. 
Uh, and the and the the actress who plays her is just so much better of an actress, and they're just really clever at the way that they can manipulate how menacing they are. Um, when you actually bump, you know, meet them in the game, you're just like, oh shit, because they are a legit menace, you know. And and so uh, just that comparative to to Reaver, it's just like fucking hell. That is, she was such a miscast. I almost felt bad anyone, for it. it when um, oh, they sorry. were having her do deliveries, she just couldn't handle like no angry deliveries. She just couldn't do them whenever they asked her to do it, and they just went with whatever take she gave. Oh, the second people. sister doesn't shout. She doesn't shout. She's Urgh. menacing. She's menacing. She's manipulative, and she's menacing. When she shouts, it goes. Urgh. Oh I yeah, I was going to say. Anyone. I thought you meant. <laughs> For a second there, I thought you were saying Reva doesn't shout. Like, yeah, she doesn't shout. She growls. She does this weird. Like I said, I think it was like an open bars when I was saying she, she does it like a child does it. Where yep. they're like, I'm angry. And you're like, yeah, you, just, you totally sound it. You got it. Scream from the diaphragm, folks. Yeah. Uh, Stephen Daldry and Hossein Amini were brought on to direct and write the film originally. Uh, respectively, before the project shifted into episode format with the launch of on D plus in 2019, uh, Joby Harold was subsequently brought on to repurpose the fucking script uh, to take over as head writer repurposer, paving the way for the version director Deborah Chow eventually brought to D plus. And yeah, this one's all on her plate. But, Do you uh, remember how much praise she got? Back in the day for a Mandalorian I, episode, I do. that's gone. They should have Deborah <laughs> Chow direct a trilogy. That's what I heard. She Ooh, could, she can't direct her direction in this too. season was yeah. piss. Well, her direction was all over the fucking place, literally. Fucking that shaky cam was doing my head in. Uh, I was terrible. Yeah, was well, well, you can see it. Like shaky cam in the dark. <laughs> <laughs> the best combo. That's right. It's like close your eyes and shake your head. That's what it was like. Um, now... <laughs> Project's very first writer has opened up uh, uh, and how his plan for Obi-Wan Kenobi's story didn't just comprise of one theatrical feature, but three. It was going to be a trilogy, right, Jeremy, out there? wasn't just a movie. It was a trilogy. God, that would have been fucking terrible. Uh, <laughs> in an exclusive interview with the direct's Nathan Johnson, is it Johnson? Uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi's uh, Stuart Beetle talked about uh, his role in making the Ewan McGregor star project and how it was originally imagined as a full trilogy. Oh, it's Beatty. Sorry. I say Beetle. It's Beatty. Like Beatty eyes. Uh, was credited as a writer for episodes one, two, and three and the season finale of the series. Now, I want you to let that sink in. This man who wrote this movie back uh, fucking 2019 prior to COVID was a got a writer credit for fucking four of the six episodes that he had nothing to do with. So that means enough of his material was left in there that they had to give him a writing credit, which means they didn't change a ton. I'm sure they changed enough, but not enough because you could change enough of somebody's script to have him completely removed while he still yeah. has the basic framework there. So that's crazy. And that's all their fucking writer's guild rules or whatever the fuck this they are. Unlimited amount of realities about the way they make this shit that remind me they don't give a fuck about the script writing process. They just don't care. Just get it uh, done. Beatty revealed that he only wrote the screenplay for the original feature film that the show was based on and never collaborated with the series writers while also mentioning Solo's box office performance as the reason for Kenobi, for the Kenobi movie never getting made. In other words, no. Solo lost money. Oh, yeah. Uh, right. Uh, I'm just, I don't know. Right. So not... <laughs> Uh, so not all, none. I wrote the film that they based the show on. So yeah, I spent like a year, year and a half working on it. And then when the decision was made not to make any more spinoff films after Solo came out, I left the project and went on to other things. Joby came on, took my scripts and turned them, uh, turned it in from two hours into six. So I did not work with them at all. I just got credit for the episodes because it was all my stuff again your stuff sucks 
It was wasn't six say. hours. By the way, that wasn't no fucking six hours. <laughs> no, not even no. close. It Take was, out the padding, we end up with probably two hours, yeah, at most. At most two hours. So you got, like, I'll be generous with that first episode. You got, like, 40 minutes in the first episode. Then it was, like, 32, 33, 32, um, 33, and then, like, 40 minutes in that last one. So, like, two and a half If you took the... um. If you took the catch up though from the beginning and, and to, to the end, it's like 28 minutes a, an episode for some <laughs> of these episodes. Yeah, it's like two, two and a half hours. So, what he did was he added all the slow walking around. Uh, maybe Leia, I probably Leia. I doubt Leia was supposed to be in there. Do you think Leia was in there in the beginning? Then maybe she I was. I got a feeling she was. Yeah, uh, BD also revealed that his original story pitched to Lucasfilm in 2016 involved convincing them of three stories. For Obi-Wan, the first would have ended up becoming the series' first season, and the second looked ahead to the Jedi Master's lead-up to A New Hope. 